For lab 7, we're going to set up the skeleton of your brochure site. Now, we're going to start using an external CSS page for this. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a folder 7 created, and then you're going to go into File, New, and you're going to select HTML with no layout. We are going to do this as HTML5, and we're going to put CSS in the heading page initially. So I'm going to hit create and then we're going to save the file as index.html. You want to make sure it's in your labs 07 folder. When you're done with the skeleton, you'll be able to save it into your Project 1 folder to keep working on it. So we're going to do this in design mode. And I want to go through the basics of table layout. You've already done a single page. I'm going to start by inserting a table. And I'm going to have it have four rows, three columns, and I'm going to set this up to a fixed width of 960 pixels, which matches how we're going to do most of our CSS layouts. I'm going to set in a zero pixel border, and we're going to make the padding five pixels. That will leave five pixels between each item and its cell. I'm going to hit OK, and then we're going to start playing with some of the CSS for this. Now what I want to do, initially if I were to create CSS here, you can go into Page Properties, and it will let you set things like your page font, and I recommend picking any of the sans serifs. You can set your pixel size. I prefer M's. I'm going to make it a little bit large, 1.2 M's. And M's are based on the default size of the page, and they scale better than pixels. I'm going to leave the text color as black. I'm going to set a background color of a dark blue. And then I'm going to go into the links and we're going to have them the same, same as the page font, but I'm going to pick some different colors. I like to do it a little bit more faded out in the same sort of tone. There we go. So you can just sort of pick anything you want here, and we'll show you how that works. You can also do headings of different sizes. So my heading 1, I might want to be 1.6 M's, 1 1.5, 1.4, and that's probably as far as I'm going to go. And I can hit Apply, and you're going to see that everything's going to change. I'm actually going to want these to be the same color, and you'll notice I can use my dropper here as the background. Okay, it doesn't look like much yet. I'm going to go into the split view, and you'll see that it's set up a table for us, and we have all of our cascading style sheets up here up at the top. I'm actually going to select everything from style type to the end of style, and I'm going to cut it out. And I'm going to choose File, New, CSS, Create, and I'm going to save this in my Chapter 7 folder as 07 CSS.
and I can actually paste these in here. I often will start working on a single page or you can go directly to external styles but I want to show you how you take it from one to the other. You basically just remove that style tag from the HTML. Now I'm going to have to reconnect them. In Dreamweaver the way to do that is to go into the class area in properties you want to make sure you're on the HTML and in the class choose attach style sheet and then you're going to browse for your style sheet which will be make sure you're in web 175 labs 07 and I'm going to select it right there and hit open I want to link not import because I want all of my pages to refer back to it now while I'm doing layout with the table Here I'm going to go and select my table. I'm going to close my files because I don't need this right now. So I'm going to close that tab group. And I'm going to look at the different options I have for the table. With the table selected, I have the options down here. So I'm going to center align the table. And then I'm going to start making some CSS formatting changes. For this pro project we're using CSS for formatting and we're using tables for layout and again the table layout is something that used to be done I want you to see how it's done so that you can convert convert one in the future so I'm going to select all the rules for CSS and it has an option to add a new CSS rule and I want it to apply to the table so I'm redefining tables right here. So I'm going to hit OK. Oops, I don't want to do this as a class name. I want to do it as a tag. And then I can do things. I can change the font family. I don't need to. I'm going to change the background color to light gray. And I'm going to hit apply after each thing. I'm going to look at my box here and I want to look at the margins and I really want to set a 10 pixel margin up at the top. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to choose File, Save All, and I'm going to go back into Design View and that gives me a little bit of a buffer here. Now I can start playing with these and the nice thing about doing a table layout is you can nest tables inside of tables. So I'm going to merge these two tables, table merge cells. And I'm just going to block out here what you'd actually put in here. So I might have my logo here. I could have the mast head here. Now, if I wanted to, I can actually put another table inside of this cell. So I'm going to insert a table and I'm going to make it one row and four columns. And I'm going to make it 100 percent. I'm going to set the cell padding to two and I'm going to hit OK. And that would give me something that I could create basically buttons in. So I could take this cell and I could put links in here. I could go way, way further on this. Or you could put your buttons in here or you can just put images. I'm just showing you that you can nest a table inside of another. So if I wanted to, I could just make this a link to home page one page two and page three and you can resize these if you need to the other thing I might choose to do with these is to make the alignment different center align and middle align
And if I want to see what it's going to look like, I can change it to the live view. I can take it out of the live view. I could make this format H1 and if I wanted to change the alignment there for H1 I might choose under block to text align center. So you don't have to do your navigation this way. You can put but you can put images next to each other. You can do um, lots of different things. Now I might merge these cells. I'm gonna right click and choose merge cells. So that gives me a bigger block, and if I wanted to, I could put another table inside of here and redefine it. I'm going to merge these cells. And then I'm going to merge these cells across the bottom. And this is the way that layout really used to be done. It's not the right way to do it, and in the next video I'm going to show you how to convert what you did a couple weeks ago when you did your first page of this type into the CSS version. So here I could put interior links here. I could put content here. I could put my footer in here. But once I have this all set up, I will then create my navigation. Now home should link to your index.html. Page one would link to page one.html. Page two would link to page two.html. Now remember, no spaces. You can use hyphens, but you can't use spaces. And this would be page 3.html. Now you should go through and make sure that you have your common content, whatever is going to be on every page, all set up. And if you want to make it a little bigger, you just hit enter a few times. You may also, in each of these cells, it's a good idea to set your horizontal and vertical alignments and frequently you'll want the vertical alignment to be top. And that might be middle and center. And again, this is the way it used to be done, not the way it's done today. So this is basically would be my template page and I can save it And I can save it as index, and then I can save it as page one, and then I can save it as page two. page three and page, I don't think I need page four, let's see, so page three. So once I've done that, I'm going to reopen my files window, go into lab seven, and if I want to just refresh it, you'll see that all of those files have been created. And I can upload them to the server. I'm choosing yes to save everything. And then we're going to go out because you should always check and make sure it's out there. So I'm going to go to my website. 
this class, labs, and lab 7. And you'll see I absolutely love that shade of green. So I, I could go through and change that, but you can see the mouse overs are working. Now what I didn't do was actually change the content. So you don't really know that it's working unless you check up here. If I see page 1, you'll see it's page 1 up here. Home takes me to index. Page 2 takes me to page 2. Ideally, when you test this, it's a good idea to actually have it say, instead of content here, home, page 1, page 2. And you also should put a different title on each page. So let's go do that. So I'm going to go back to my index. And we'll call that home. Now you want to have it something meaningful, like whatever business. It should be the name of your business home page. And then page one, you would just test it here by making it page one, and it should be widgets or whatever, and the name of your company. And then page two, and you'd have something meaningful up here. And page three, and again, something meaningful up here. Now remember, search engine optimization it doesn't like table format, but it would pay attention to the names of your links, any titles you put for your links, um, and what you have as your H1 and H2, and these would typically be H2. But I'm going to go ahead and choose. You'll notice that these have changed because they have the asterisk next to them that tells you that they've been changed. You can do a file, save all, then we can go ahead and upload these again. And if I refresh this, that does not look like it uploaded. So select the whole file folder, make sure it's connected, upload, yes, dependent files, and test that again. Make sure to refresh. There we go. So home, you'll notice that the titles are changing, page one, page two, and page three. So if you set up all of the external links, then you will just have to change your content here in the middle. So that gives you a basic way to set up a skeleton for your site. The hard part is initial, setting up your initial layout. Once you do that, then you're really only changing the body content on each page. In the next project, we're going to move to using all CSS layout. And in the next lab, you're going to convert your old project that we did as a table into CSS so you know how to do it.